Thank you for joining us. My name is Sabiha Kazal and I'm a member of the Kazan National Office staff. So before we begin, I'm going to go over a couple of housekeeping items. So today's session will begin with a presentation from our speakers, followed by some time for discussion and questions. Um, I know that our presenters are looking forward to hearing from the audience. Um, to engage in conversation, just press the raise hand button so uh, you can be unmuted and you can also ask questions using the Q&A box. And uh, just to note that the session will be recorded. I'll pass it on to Pamela now. Hello, my name is Pamela Farthing and I'm a member of the Causen Digital Health Interest Group. Causen's Nurse Educator Interest Groups are a forum for educators to share ideas and collaborate with colleagues from across the country on a topic area that interests them. If you're interested in joining this group, you can get in touch with Christine who emailed you the link to join today or visit the CNEI website. I would like to respectfully acknowledge that Cousin's national office is located on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin. And I'd like to also respectfully acknowledge that I live and work on Treaty 6 territory and homelands of the Métis. I'd now like to introduce today's presenters, Dr. Karen Furlong, Dr. Manal Clave, and Dr. Lynn Nagel. Dr. Karen Furlong is a senior teaching associate in the Department of Nursing and Health Sciences at the University of New Brunswick. Karen's developing research program focuses on changing nursing competencies in response to an increased use of digital health platforms. This research interest complements Karen's earlier doctoral study using narrative inquiry as the methodological frame. Karen explored learning experiences of registered nurses during the integration of an electronic health record. Karen's recent research projects include measurement of entry to practice informatics competencies using the Joanna Briggs Institute scoping review methodology and a mixed method study examining nurse educators knowledge and current integration of basic digital health content in undergraduate nursing curricula across Canada. Dr. Manal Clave is an assistant professor in the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Alberta. Her research program focuses on nursing practice with digital health technology and nursing informatics education. She is the founder of the Alberta Nursing Informatics Association and a treasurer for the Canadian Nursing Informatics Association. Dr. Lynn Nagel is nationally and internationally known for her work in health and nursing informatics. She brings expertise from many different clinical and academic settings across several provincial jurisdictions. Her unique career trajectory has been a journey for forging new career paths and preparing nurses for the world of digital health, embracing opportunities to provide leadership in non-traditional roles and positioning nursing as a central player in the realm of all things e-health. With adjunct appointments at the University of New Brunswick and the University of Toronto and Western University, she provides guest lectures in undergraduate and graduate programs and is currently collaborating on several research initiatives. For those of you just joining us, welcome. I will now turn things over to Dr. Furlong, Dr. Clave, and Dr. Nagel. Thank you, Pam. It's Lynn Nagel here, and I'm going to start us off today and uh, provide you with the overview of, of the outputs of our study that was conducted in uh, 2018. And many of you will have heard about this work. Maybe you participated in this work. And we're actually at a very important juncture where we're actually hoping to get some input from you folks today. Um, we've, we've launched a couple of publications of the findings, and I know that many of you across the country are doing work in your own jurisdictions, in your own schools, in trying to advance the adoption of informatics competencies in undergraduate education. Um, before I jump into the content here, I want to acknowledge Dr. Klib and Dr. Furlong, and uh, they are very much co-conspirators in this work with me. I guess um, we, we took this journey upon ourselves back in probably the fall of 2017, 
and uh, received funding from InfoWay to, to launch the study. So I wanna thank both of them and they will be ably assisting me to answer any questions you might have uh, at the end of the presentation. And I also want to make a note, and I'll give Manal credit for this. The balloons on the screen are just to pick me up to get away from the notion of uh, looking at masks all the time and maybe something a little bit more uplifting and in facing these difficult times that we've all been uh, living through for the last year and a half. So um, anyway, we're not going to talk about that today. So I'm going to move us on. So in terms of um, the study that we undertook to really try and understand the extent of digital health integration across Canadian schools of nursing, um, as I mentioned, we did solicit uh, funding support from Canada Health InfoWay and were successful in securing that funding. Um, throughout the project, I have to say, uh, we also had uh, extensive support from CASN and both in, a, in an instrumental way and just in terms of helping us um, raise the profile of the study and uh, encourage participation across the country. And I'm not getting my slides to move. Um, hmm. uh -huh. I'll try this. There we go. So I just want to acknowledge InfoWay and Kazan both for their support through this study. Uh, and I think all of you will. Um, be familiar with the fact that we have posted the study and its complete report on the CASM website. So if you're interested in digging into the details a bit further, please help yourselves and, and have a look at the, the full report, as well as our articles, which are cited at the end of, of this presentation. So just to set a bit of context, we conducted a study way back in 2003 when we first launched the Canadian Nursing Informatics Association. One of the first things we did was to source out some funds to launch a study to really get a sense of what was happening in schools of nursing. And as you can all appreciate, back in 2003, that was pretty early days in terms of health information systems. And so it wasn't really that surprising to find that less than 30% of schools of nursing across the country were actually doing anything substantively in this area. Um, so it had been 15 years since we did that study and a lot of work had been undertaken both in healthcare organizations, in education, but also under the leadership of CASM. And uh, some of you will have been part of the work that was launched in 2011. Um, I've been involved with Christine and team at CASM since that time when we uh, evolved the entry to practice competencies for registered nurses, those were published in 2012. We subsequently, and actually concurrently, developed a toolkit for educators um, that following year. And that, again, is available on the website. All of these documents are avail available free for download and your use. So I do encourage you, if you have not looked at any of these tools, please. Uh, do go to the, the CASM website and help yourself to all of this wonderful content that's there. Um, we actually embarked on the um, creation of a digital health faculty peer network in 2015. And part of the output of, of that work across the country uh, was the creation of another document focused on consumer health solutions that could be used in teaching students. And the digital health uh, faculty peer network um, was a pretty significant outreach by a number of, of individuals across the country. We had 11 peer leaders um, that were recruited late in 2014. And actually each of, of the peer leaders reached out to schools of nursing in their region and secured uh, individuals who they began to mentor and meet with and discuss the whole area of digital health and informatics competency. So, that was a really significant piece of work. And then um, further to that, there was uh, funding secured to actually develop some e-learning modules, which again are available on the CASM website. And I think are getting a lot of uptake in schools of nursing right now. So that's probably um, something that we wanna keep our eye on and see what the actual success is in terms of the utilization of those modules. 
So we did a lot of work and leading up to the study, we, we felt that we wanted to find out if over the course of, of the last seven, eight years, and even since the 23, 2003 study, whether there had been much change in the landscape of informatics, digital health integration. So we were really interested in finding out what was happening. Um, were there some good examples of where integration was occurring? What were the needs of nurse educators um, at this point in time? And really trying to identify some going forward directions that could be instructive for not only educators and School of Nursing administrators, but also for CASN, for Canada Health InfoWay, healthcare organizations, and also our regulators who support the whole standards and accreditation process. So, so we really had a, an ambitious undertaking here. And we ended up doing a mixed method study, which was constituted by surveys, a focus group, interviews, and one-on-one um, -on -one telephone interviews. So um, use of, of the CASM resource was really something we were interested in for both an administrator and educator group. So we had a survey targeting each of those groups. And, and I'm going to speak to the findings um, broadly in terms of what we discovered within each of those um, groups. And we also were interested in how much knowledge they were um, going to sort of describe themselves in terms of expertise. We were interested in knowing you know, how much they were actually undertaking within their school of nursing, whether or not they felt confident to teach basics of digital health and informatics, were they feeling supported by their administrators and whether or not this was even a worthy endeavor. So we had a lot of questions um, and we were very, very interested in seeing whether or not there was sort of a comparability in the points of views expressed by each group. So we'll start with the nurse administrators and you can see that we had a geographic distribution which really uh, reflects what you might see across the country in terms of numbers of faculty and, and schools of nursing. So the administrators um, by and large were representative of Ontario and Western Canada um, with a proportionate representation from Atlantic Canada and also uh, from the territories. So I think we, um, we felt that there was uh, a good representative sample from the administrators. Um, we did only hear from 35. There was some duplication from schools. I think we had a unique number of 27 uh, schools of nursing represented in this group. As you notice, there's a variety of administrative positions that were represented. Uh, I think what's most important here is the fact that um, the administrator's self-rating of informatics competency on the right hand of your screen uh, shows that um, I would say 50% of them felt that they were relatively competent in the area. So that to me was a very uh, positive finding. Um, again, it comes back to really understanding the full scope of what people's competency encompasses. Um, they were also asked to comment on what they thought their educators digital health competency um, looked like. And as you can see, it's sort of a, a full range here um, with, I would say, moderate percentage uh, being reflected in terms of competency uh, among educators. <clears throat> um, we also wanted to know what they thought educators were doing in terms of the use of the CASM resources. And so I think um, what you'll see momentarily is that the administrative views on the use of these resources varied somewhat from what the educators themselves expressed. Um, I think this reflects a bit more of a, a positive utilization of those resources than we actually heard from the educators themselves. But again, um, if you look at that last column, um, some of them weren't probably familiar with these whiteboards and, and possibly not able to comment on whether or not faculty were using them. And by the way, these two whiteboard animations are also available uh, for your use. These were also developed over the course of, 
of the time that we were working <clears throat> with the digital health uh, peer leader group, but also through the Nursing Data Standards Symposium. We also were interested in what particular areas that administrators felt that their, their faculty were focused on. And as you can see, um, there were certain areas where there was actually not a lot of emphasis being placed, but other areas such as the legal and regulatory requirements and things like multimedia and um, to a certain extent, the use of websites and internet resources these were rated as fairly highly utilized, and that's not surprising to us. Um, we also were interested in how much integration was happening in the classroom versus clinical, and you can sort of see here, again, these are administrators' uh, perceptions in terms of how much digital health uh, informatics work was happening in these various areas of, of education. Um, we were also interested through the course of the study in knowing about the use of electronic health records, either in uh, skills labs or accessing training environments from vendor systems, pre and post uh, clinical. Um, we were particularly interested in whether or not they were using any kind of a simulated electronic health record in their lab. So again, a small, small percentage there. Um, one of the things that we proposed to them in the survey was maybe it would be helpful to have a committee doing this work. And I think there was uh, you know, good support for that, but very few had an existing committee focused on this. I think the number here that suggests that their educators are well prepared um, to teach digital health may be a little bit of a, uh, an inconsistency with the educators' views of themselves. So I think overall, um, these were interesting findings to compare and contrast with the educators. Um, overall, I think there was strong support for supporting uh, the integration into curriculum, felt that this would have the ability to contribute to safer quality care, and also that these would be successful uh, graduation competencies for students to have. Um, in terms of the nurse educators, again, we had a really nice distribution, I think a, a good representative sample of 360 educators from across Canada. And again, um, here you see a relative similar distribution as it relates to uh, Ontario, Western Canada, and Atlantic Canada. And then again, we have in this particular instance, uh, more nurses from uh, Quebec as well as the territories. And so the demographics of those folks, um, you can look at those yourselves, but again, I raise your attention to the self-rating of informatics competency, which again, most of the educators felt that they were at a beginner level um, with about 40% rating themselves as in intermediate, which was actually promising to me. I thought that was, a, that was a pretty good indicator that we had made some progress over the years. Um, the use of the ca cause and resources, all of these things that we had um, asked the administrators about, you will see again, those numbers are a little uh, heavy on the not at all side and, and less, um, significant findings here in terms of uh, moderate to extensive use. So I think our takeaway here was that we still needed to do some work around uh, raising awareness as to the availability of these resources. And in a subsequent study, I would also include in here the use of the digital health um, learning modules. And then asking them about where they were actually teaching NI, if at all, um, very few teaching a course in an undergraduate program, some teaching a little bit of NI within different courses. Um, most of those who had lectures were invited guests and very few actually involved in informatics research. Um, and the use of the simulated EHR, again, most schools of nurse, nursing are not using something of the silk. And this was of particular interest because this came up during some of our deliberations um, during the development of the other tools. I know that um, there are some pockets of development, um, 
certainly at Sherbrooke and also at BCIT where there has been some work done in developing a sandbox EHR. So we wanted to know if there was much going on in that realm. Um, I bolded a few things here just because these are the areas on the left-hand side where more than 50% of, of the respondents indicated they were teaching something about these things. Um, whereas on the other panel, um, there were probably less um, educators, there were less people who were actually doing anything in the realm of um, decision support tools and um, Sorry, I've got that backwards. More of them were, were supporting them to, to do uh, things like website searches and internet searching, um, talking generally about how informatics applies to nurses in all roles, and a little bit around clinical uh, supports and practice guidelines. Um, and again, this is, um, I think, not surprising to me. Um, if you look at the, the left-hand panel, there's a lot of need to elevate the focus on some of these things because these are the things that are at play in our practice environments today. Um, their confidence in their ability to teach uh, basic digital health and informatics um, was about 50% of the individuals responding felt that they were fairly confident. Um, not everybody felt they had the competencies they needed, certainly not able to not a lot able to or wanting to teach in a graduate program in this area or teaching a specific course in this area and very few in terms of teaching this within an interprofessional course or program. Um, we are also interested at this point we wanted to know whether or not people had sought out some continuing education and we wanted to know whether we, that faculty were being supported to seek out um, professional development in this area. So you can see it's a little bit all over the place, um, but by and large, most educators have not completed any kind of specialty certification, uh, whereas a lot of nurses in practice have done so. Um, and I think very few had actually completed you know, a course or an educational program in this area. But I think that the positive here is that people were prepared to and willing and interested to uh, take advantage of an opportunity if it was presented. And I think overall, again, very clear support here um, for the importance of having good leadership support to do this work um, that most educators do think this is important and that these are uh, important competencies for undergraduate success. So you can see that by and large, most people agreed with these statements. Um, there was some disagreement, but that's, that's an interesting one to pursue another day. Um, the focus group really affirmed the fact that there was limited awareness of the resources that um, there's still this view that um, schools need to have digital health champions as opposed to it being the work of everybody um, and that it, there's elements of this that could apply in all teaching. Um, and I think recognizing that there's still a lot of confusion um, in looking at computer literacy versus informatics literacy or information literacy. And I think that continues to be uh, a bit of an issue that requires clarification as we move forward. So this is not about the teaching technologies in, as much as it is those technologies used in delivering care. And I think there is also a, a very key message here about um, settings not always being supportive of students using the technologies in their clinical practice, not always being supportive of use of things like smartphones, and that there's still so much variation in the field that it makes it difficult sometimes um, to teach students and to actually be able to demonstrate in practice settings uh, how these things actually work. And so I think the other prevailing notion that came out of this is the fact that we still don't have systems that by and large really effectively support nursing. The interview themes, um, again, 
it came out that this is not necessarily a priority area for nurse educators. Um, it's, it's like most things, any of you who are um, faced with trying to incorporate new content into your curriculum, I think there's, there's always a bit of a pushback as to where this is gonna fit. Um, and many organizations are still depending on uh, health career organizations to teach their students how to use the EHR. Um, I think there's a number of schools across the country that have actually started to map the entry level competencies to their curriculum, but there's still a lot of variation. These uh, individuals also provided us with some suggestions around strategies and again, uh, raising awareness was, was really a big thing in terms of making sure people know uh, what resources are available, but also making sure that um, there's a recognition that um, we might need to develop some further uh, training materials to support faculty. Um, there's been some work done and discussions with, with Kazan and through this particular group around uh, making the competencies explicit in accreditation. So that's something we continue to have dialogue about. And I think overall, we need to leverage the people who have the expertise, and that would be most of you, I would say, who could help continue to advance this agenda. So overall, I think uh, the good news story here is that educators and administrators value digital health and informatics. There's a little bit of variation between their views of, of their use and knowledge of the CASM resources. Um, and I think some difference of perception in how competent people are in this area. Um, the whole issue of, of teaching technologies versus clinical technologies um, is something we continue to need to um, emphasize. And I think the practice arena is continuing to pose a challenge for us. That's, uh, that's not something that's gone away. So the implications for the administrators, um, we're basically saying that if you're going to give somebody this responsibility, they need to be supported in whatever way uh, they need to make this happen. Uh, we do suggest developing a working group, um, really look at what your ed educators need in this area and figure out ways in which to provide it and really, um, advocate for people to go to conferences and workshops, take courses, um, get some certification. There's lots and lots of options out there and really being supported, um, I think is really important for faculty development. So administrators, um, we felt you know, need to kind of recognize the need for nurses educating to get out there and, and develop some of these skills. For educators, um, and this may be something you can reflect on yourselves, um, really thinking about your own teaching where you can integrate some digital health content um, and not making the assumption that just because our students are very comfortable with computers and overall tech savvy that they're, they're uh, quite competent in this area because that's not necessarily the case. Um, and having discussions with students, I find is really very enlightening always because they will um, communicate a lot of good messages that we could share with other students as well as other educators, um, the kinds of frustrations that they face in their clinical practice settings and you know the limitations of being able to actually use some of the tools. And for you also to continue looking for learning opportunities and sharing your experiences with other faculty. And for Kazan, I mean, for uh, I think for us, the biggest um, implication here is to continue to raise awareness as to the, the great tools that have been developed. And although it's been challenging over the last year and a bit, um, if you think about opportunities to bring educators and administrators together and really share some of the learnings. And again, continuing to talk about accreditation as it relates to digital health. Um, our study is probably somewhat limited in terms of, we didn't have every school of nursing represented in the country. We might've had some response bias. 
And although we had set up a focus group in French, it did not happen due to lack of participants. So um, everything, although both surveys were actually uh, translated into French, so that the Francophone community had an opportunity to participate as well. So here are some references, the entry to practice competencies and the two publications that have arisen from this study. And again, I encourage you to have a look at these in a little bit more depth. And um, for the full study, you can go to the website as well. So that's it. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions. We do have questions for the group because we always like an opportunity here to hear your voices and see if there are things happening that may be net new or uh, thoughts that you may have relative to some of our recommendations and findings. So I'm gonna stop there and um, I'm gonna ask Karen and Manal to uh, jump in for this part of the, the session and help in terms of responding to questions. So what do you think? Um, are we doing enough? Are we doing the right things? Are we doing what we need to do? So let's open it up. Thank you, Len. I just wanted uh, to mention um, if the participants would like also to type their questions in the chat box, that also works with us. So mm -hmm. we're monitoring that as well. Great, thank you. I see that Cindy has raised her hand, so I'm gonna unmute, unmute you, Cindy. I think you can go ahead. Am I good for sound? You're good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, thank you for this. I'm I'm curious to know um, what it looks like for you in for integrating this into the curriculum. And part of my reason for asking is, in addition to teaching, I do casual work in different places. So in Saskatchewan here, we have a health authority, which in theory should make one computer system or one electronic health care record easy for the students but we don't all go to health authority clinical placements uh, one of the places i work in the clinical placements i take students to is uh, the federal government and we have uh, one electronic health care record there and when i compare it to the one i use in the health region as an employee um, i'm much happier with the one that the federal government uses and so which, you know, other provinces may not have integrated health authorities. They might have several uh, regional health authorities in their province. How um, specific do we get? How general do we want to keep the teaching about the digital health care, for example, and other technologies that we might use? Uh, like during the pandemic year, we run methadone clinics and psychiatric clinics in the provincial correctional system through uh, PECSIP systems, you know, sort of like over an iPad. So how general, how specific are we looking to get? That's a great question, Cindy. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've always been a firm believer in the notion of uh, concept-based learning. And so I, I don't know that students necessarily need to learn every specific vendor solution out there. I think they need notionally an understanding of what's um, encompassed by clinical documentation online, what, what is an order entry application, you know, where can you find things like lab results, um, the, the basic functional elements of an electronic health record. Um, and if you back up from the EHR, thinking about what's the concept of decision support and how does that manifest in practice setting? So I, I think if we can sort of talk about general concepts and then use illustrations from practice environments to really demonstrate those, that's probably the best way to, to tackle this because you're right, there's gonna be a ton of inconsistency even within health authorities. So, um, trying to teach students to learn all these different systems is, is not even feasible, nor is it practical or, or even something that I think we should spend our time doing. So um, uh, I'll let Manal and Karen have a comment on that one as well. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great, great question, uh, Cindy. And um, just to add to what Lynn's already said, um, and reflective in the entry level competencies from CAS and, uh, and the importance of clinical judgment and that being a part of what we're addressing 
in preparing our um, future nurses for practice. Um, having a sense of, of uh, electronic health record and the access to information, the use of that information and the ability to sift through it and to make decisions um, are all things that we need to be paying attention to. Interestingly enough, there still seems to be a focus uh, of educators on the computer literacy side of things in the sense that our students are prepared for practice. So in follow up to your question, I think by having some sandboxes or some training environments for our students, I think we can push the message that um, we're talking about much more than computer literacy. We're talking about the, the ability to access and use and manage information. And uh, it seems that that's where um, we need to direct our energies in helping to, uh, to prepare students um, for practice. Thank you. So um, can I just jump in a little bit? This is Manal and uh, thanks Karen and uh, Lynn for your perspectives. But also um, I think that addressing the competencies is um, going to be an ongoing um, uh, an ongoing kind of um, focus for the nurse educators because what's happening with this um, digital health transformation, the fact that it is too fast and mm -hmm. we're kind of now jumping into a whole new era of artificial intelligence and more complex environments, the students are going to work uh, with. And it, it troubles me when the students learn about digital health and technology when they are watching Netflix. Like, you know, this is kind of something we need as nurse educators and nursing programs to address and to begin bringing these conversations in the classroom. And I acknowledge the discrepancies in the clinical system, but also uh, we've just completed actually a study with the nursing students because we've listened to educators to administrators, we also examined the literature globally. So we know where the gaps are, but we never talk to the students about those competencies. So the current research we're just gonna uh, finish up soon and, and share with you guys, uh, tells us that the students are actually beginning to see those gaps on, you know, on our behalf, that they want to see more from the nursing schools, they want to be given opportunities to practice with those tools. They wanna um, have opportunities to go and do trainings in clinical settings. So in Alberta here, we kind of began a lot of work uh, with the health authority, with Alberta Health Services to build those partnerships. And that was actually one of our recommendations is that nursing schools are trying their best and the educators are trying their best despite all of the discrepancies. But we need to begin also building those partnerships with the clinical service agencies where there is some technology integration taking place and making that case, you know what? We need our students to be considered on those training opportunities. We need to talk about how this is going to impact the nurses and the students who are going to be using those technologies. So beginning those conversations, even like in our province here, we brought in like state-of-the-art technology that's supposedly going to be the best solution ever. But on top of that, we're still using 1,300 more technological solutions. So those discrepancies in the type of technologies out there will continue. It's not going to go away, even if you bring in the best technology ever. The point here, what Len has emphasized, is that conceptual understanding, like, you know, decision support, we do that every day. We drive a car, we make 100 decisions in less than five minutes. So people need to think about the technology, the context, and how does that relate to their roles? And then also to be aware of the language and to begin using that. So when we say informatics competencies, people may be thinking like, what does that, what does that mean? In reality, when you look at the findings from our study, the educators are actually doing that, but they are not yet comfortable using that language. So we're hoping to hear more. I'm gonna stop there because we have so many questions for you. And also I see a question, um, it's gone actually, it was in the QA, but I'll give the floor back to the audience for their questions. Thanks. In the question and answer, uh, we answered it already. She was <laughs> just asking if the presentation, if there was going to be a link sent out. So 
We are recording the presentation and it will be posted on the Cousin YouTube channel. I'm going to just um, flip to the some of the questions we have for you. Um, be curious to know if any of you have any thoughts. Um, just in terms of increasing the uptake of, of the resources that have been developed, um, any thoughts in terms of what we might do differently and the kinds of things we might do to increase educator capacity? I'm gonna give you a few to think about. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the things, you know, we, we're doing some work right now developing informatics competencies for nurse leaders. So the question occurs to us as to whether there should be a specific set of competence, competencies for nurse educators. I don't know what you think about that. Any, any reaction to that as a proposition for the future? Just a reminder that if you just push raise hand, it should be at the bottom of your Zoom screen and then we can see you and unmute you so you can ask a question. And then I guess, you know, thinking about your own practice, how do you see yourself in this digital age? Have you changed how you teach? Have you changed how you deliver content? Um, are you using practice examples in your teaching? And do you do something to help your students or do you expect them to figure it out on their own? So these are all things to think about um, as you sort of reflect on your own work as an educator. Um, you know, what kinds of things influence your use of digital health concepts in your teaching? Um, what what might help you do a better job um, than you are today? Are there things that your administrators could be doing, that Chasm could be doing, that this community could be doing? You know, I they have a hand raised, so I can unmute. Okay, go ahead. Natasha. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Wow, those questions are a lot to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um I'm sitting here trying to like uh, figure out where to place the responsibility, and and I do think it's all nurses and nurse educators that need to take on that. I think what you said, one of the the key things that you said is there's such a difference between computer literacy and informatics. Right. And, and we're not, that's kind of the crux point, right? Is that we're, we're not making that happen in our education settings. Um, but I've also been in a position that has taken me a, away from the, the classroom, quote unquote, so to speak. So I, I don't have access to the EHRs. I can't teach students what's actually happening in practice. And so I'm curious if the responsibility really is on us as educators or if that's just something students are going to pick up in practice. However, as a nurse, I need to be aware of informatics. So I almost feel like having a set of competencies would help um, push educators to be more reflective and be more cognizant of leveling up from computer literacy. I don't know, just throwing all that out there. <laughs> So that Natasha answers four questions. <laughs> <laughs> so just curious, Natasha, um, based on what you've just said. Um, so the competencies have been around for almost nine years. Um, and I, I guess we're a bit stymied to think about what else can we do to number one, raise awareness, because I think you're right, the use of the competencies um, introduces a little bit of discipline in terms of what gets delivered in curricula, um, but, but what can we do differently? What are we not doing? What, what mm -hmm. more needs to be done? Well, I, I think in, a, in some way that's uh, coordination probably, like I, 
I, my background is all into professional education. And so I see the same struggles with trying to get those competencies into any program and every nurse picks their specialty area and that's what they focus on. Right. So the only ways that we change our education system is when we require those competencies to be seen and assessed and evaluated for accreditation by Cousin. So I don't know how we like push that agenda to make sure that those competencies flow through and also push that it's more than just literacy. Um, but I think yeah. it needs to be at an organizational or program level. Mm -hmm. I, like there has to be more than just requiring nurses to be more reflective. Exactly. And thanks, Natasha, for bringing this up. Mm -hmm. I think you made me think about, uh, then if you wanted to bring that slide we had about the entry to practice because that's I think what uh, Nataja is uh, pointing at is that it's really um, a whole shared responsibility and definitely educators will have to continue working on that domain to leverage beyond computer literacy. But it also is the responsibility of the regulatory associations to bring that attention to the educators and to future nurses that this is the practice that you will be working with. In uh, Karma, for example, we've just thought to share this with you. Um, you can see that they have used the entry to practice nursing informatics competencies for the registered nurse and started threading in some of those key concepts related to nursing informatics in the entry to practice competency. This should work in terms of an indirect way for the nursing education programs in, in a specific province to align their graduate outcomes along the lines of the entry to practice competencies for the RM. So that's kind of an indirect way so that can bring attention of educators and faculty and students to begin working on developing those competencies. Karen, do you have any other? Yeah, ideas? I, yeah, I just I, I love N Natasha's um, comments that she made, and um, just to go back to the point about um, there's still, uh, in many ways, that mindset that uh, this is the responsibility of some champions, and um, I know you know within the various groups within this interest group uh, within CNIA. We certainly we talk about that a lot, and um, certainly it's 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 visible within our findings, uh, both in the quantitative and qualitative um, data that we have, um, and it seems that to me that that in itself identifies the need uh, for um, the awareness piece um, in that uh, what we're speaking about here are entry level competencies. And I think if there's a clear sense of that, that we're not talking about a specialization per se, but we're talking about entry level competencies that all nurses must have to be safe. That, um, and I think there is, you know, the data does suggest that there is an increase in awareness when you compare these findings to um, findings back in, in 2003. Um, what the findings are suggesting from this study, uh, especially with the educator, uh, results is that there's a need uh, or desire for more support to build capacity for educators to teach entry-level competencies in nursing informatics. Um, but Natasha, thank you very much for, for all of your comments. Um, and I, I hope that in the near future, the years to come, that we certainly shift our thinking and, and uh, obtain a full appreciation for the need for this to be part of nursing competence, not an isolated skill set. So we have some other hands up. Thank you, Natasha. She was saying to you um, that we rely on the champion so much it's not sustainable. And, and she thanked you, Karen. So Melanie, you should be able to unmute and ask your question now. Yes, hi. Um, thank you for the presentation. I was actually a little bit late, so I um, missed a small, uh, just the intro, but um, I thought it was really great. Your uh, work is very valuable. Um, I think this comes down to, um, I agree with the competencies for um, educators, for sure. I'm a um, instructor at a college in Manitoba, and I'm currently in charge of the curriculum redesign 
process and um, nursing informatics and technology and simulation is something that um, we're hoping to um, really leverage in our new program and our new curriculum. Um, so competencies for educators um, is, I feel really important for this, but I also feel like it comes to um, all nurses, right? So it's part of keeping up with the times and like learning new equipment, right? You have to learn your different um, informatics uh, and technology to keep up with your practice. And also um, for schools of nursing to have improved relationships with their RHAs. I don't know about other provinces, but that's something um, in Manitoba that we're working on and hasn't always been an easy relationship, but um, kind of using those ties and resources to um, educate the educators, the students and the, and the nurses. Thanks very much, um, Molly. I just wanted to, um, you mentioned about healthcare organization. And I think, you know, one of the things that um, we did have a whole section on implications for healthcare organizations. And I think um, needing to partner with them and <clears throat> convey the importance of students having access to some of these tools um, during their educational process. And, you know, there is a lot of inconsistency and I, I think it really does come down to, you know, establishing a good working relationship with your health authority or health region. Um, and I think, you know, I think we do have a responsibility. I mean, that's, if that's a question still for some people um, as to whose job it is, I think it's everyone's job. But I think as educators, we do have a core responsibility here. Mm -hmm. I'll throw that out, but thank you. Other questions? There is There's one more hand, yeah, Glenda. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you, Lynn, for the presentation and Manal and Karen for the work that you've done. Really important survey, as others have, have uh, mentioned. And um, I just had a few things to, to add. Uh, we're, we've been lucky enough at our school, I teach at BCIT in, in Vancouver, and um, we just went through a curriculum redesign. And to your point about concept-based teaching, Lynn, we were able to integrate nursing informatics in a much more meaningful way into our curriculum redesign. I think as well, the um, recent events with the pandemic, as um, we all know, have, have helped remove some of the barriers that we've faced previously. So um, I'm interested to know if you plan to do, to repeat the survey anytime soon and, and see if there's any, <laughs> any difference. Um, and I hope that there would be. But we at uh, NBC have experienced all the challenges that we've um, been discussing today. And uh, one of the, um, and hopeful solutions that we've come up with is um, the development of a uh, open source interprofessional electronic health record that is vendor agnostic. So coming back to that concept of uh, education around informatics rather than just training and how you you know how to move from one screen to the next. It's more more an understanding of what the implications of an electronic health record are, and um, that as Karen you said that kind of pulling out the information, the data, so synthesizing it and, and, and incorporating that into judgment and workflow, et cetera. So we've been uh, working, that platform is almost ready to go and we, that has been in partnership with our um, health authorities, our um, local sort of stakeholders as well and, and post-secondary institutions across BC, BC. So we're hoping to pilot that again, the pandemic kind of put that on, on hold for a little while because we couldn't get into our sim labs, but bringing, bringing uh, that kind of interaction with, with an electronic health record into the patient care that we're teaching our students in the undergraduate program. So that's one, one solution we've come up with. And then the other one, and I recognize we're right on, short on time here, but we at BCIT, just to speak to the sort of leadership and um, the needs that have been recognized by um, certainly our leaders and administration at BCIT and in BC um, for more meaningful 
um, education at the undergraduate level and to help bridge uh, clinicians who are lacking this sort of education um, in this field, who are interested in the field, but don't have the uh, time or the interest in taking on a master's program. Um, so we're, we're in the process of, of developing or going, going through the, the, the rigmarole and jumping through the hoops of um, putting together a, uh, an advanced certificate that would help not only bridge um, undergraduate students into a master's, but would provide a sort of certificate for those, uh, for clinicians specifically um, across healthcare uh, professions to, to be able to work in the field of informatics. Um, and then to also offer to our undergraduate students a focus of practice. So our students have the, the, the choice to, to do a focus of practice in eMERGE or perinatal or pediatrics. Um, and we're gonna be offering a digital health uh, focus of practice as well. Um, so we're hoping to have that ready and rolled out uh, next year, um, but that those are some of the solutions that we've come up with on our end. And um, I hope it'd be interesting to sort of know if that's something that others are doing or if you um, see any, any uh, opportunity to, to work, you know, to integrate, integrate something that we're doing across, um, mm -hmm. you know, Canada. So anyway, that was a lot. And uh, I apologize because I know time is, time is precious. So I just wanted to share some of those. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Glenda. No, yeah. excellent. It sounds like you're really making some great inroads. So some really terrific strategies. <clears throat> do we have time for one last question or are we at the end of our time? There, well, we could maybe do one more. There are a couple others in the, in the Q&A, but do you want me to read it out or can you sure. see? Okay. Um, many employers ask me about graduate competency in using the EHR when I provide references. I now encourage my pre-graduate students to identify learning goals that focus on engaging in activities that will develop their competency in use of EHR systems in their clinical placements. But our current syllabus does not identify a specific outcome related to digital competency. We need to address this in our revised curriculum. And it's Kathy Ellis apologizing that her mic is not working. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kathy, for that comment. Uh, really important. And then Cindy is asking, do we have a current recommendation for a primer on the topic or are the resources on cause and website sufficient for faculty? What about a primer for students or new grads who have interest but not a text in their program and are asking for more? How do I best advise them? Many have lost free journal access and may see a basic text as a viable option. And again, for faculty, best ongoing update site or group. I, at our top of the hour final comment, I think I would suggest to um, people that the digital health modules, uh, self-paced learning, suited to both faculty and students and it's a great primer. I mean, it's a great place to start for either faculty or students. So I recommend going to the CASM website and have a look. I know many faculty are advising students to take those themselves. So anyway, thank you all for your attention yeah. this afternoon. Much appreciated and um, onward and upward we go. Glenda, I don't know when we're gonna do another stu study, but <laughs> uh, stay tuned. We need a break. <laughs> but stay tuned for our students' study findings. It should be out soon. And that will give you a lot of also perspective because I heard you today, many of you talk about what would the students say to that. So we hope to share this with you soon. We are all the three of us on the same team. So we'll share with this with you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. I just wanted to say a quick Ooh, thank you to our presenters uh, for sharing that today and uh, to Pamela for uh, moderating the discussion and the link will be posted as soon as it's available. Great. Thank you, thank everyone. You, Christine. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Christine. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.